Relationships can kill your creativity, destroy your uniqueness, because relationships demand that everything become we and us at the expense of I and me. I can only be we so long. Eventually, I need to be me. I need my own space. And I need somebody who likes me. So I don't have to hide me for we. We might work. Gosh, that you. is a very solid point. And reflecting on myself, I feel that is one of the biggest fears I have the fear of losing myself once again. I was telling that to somebody last night. I met somebody yesterday. We were talking. Uh, they're going through some things, trying to figure themselves out. They're basically at a chapter where their marriage, they're trying to dig themselves out, whatever happened, and trying to find themselves. And it was a case in point of a woman making her life purpose to be a mom, a wife. And you get to that point, have kids, you have your husband, and it didn't work out. You went ahead and molded into whatever it is that your partner wanted you to be. And things didn't work out. You were suppressed. You were sad. And here you are at the end of the rainbow. Things didn't work out. And now you're trying to figure yourself. You're trying to find that happiness once again. And you don't know where you're at. You feel as if you're Jason Bourne from the Bourne Identity. Where you're not, you know who you are, but you have no idea what you were before your marriage because what you became is not what you were okay and that is a weird thing to experience to try to have folks understand especially if you're a giving person you would understand if you're a person that went into it and molded and changed and became whatever it is that your partner wanted but when it came to being yourself to being what you really were Your partner was not having it whatsoever. It was about we. It was about them. But it wasn't about you. It wasn't about how you felt. Fuck your feelings. Maybe once in a while. But it's about us and how I feel. Meaning the other person says this. How that person feels you should be in the context of a relationship or a marriage. And it's a shame. And it is so crazy because I was making this person cry. I mean, that's how deep it was because I was explaining to them the journey that I went through. And she was crying mostly because, wow, that's exactly what I need to do. This is exactly what I need to find out about myself, about that's exactly the path I want to walk, the path that you've walked, because I'm at another level already. This is I'm only talking to people that have been immersed in a relationship for many years and they've been married and have a house and have kids and they've been through a tough time and and they're not together anymore and through all those years that they invested in the relationship in that label of being a wife or a partner and a parent and it doesn't work out and you get out of there and you're saying well what the fuck just happened man what is going on and I, i understand that and i see that look all the time And I tell them, look, I've been there. I understand completely. You know, because one of the things that I always talk about is people run from one relationship to another. They don't even give time to themselves to figure themselves out. You know what I'm saying? It's like it will always fascinate me when I see somebody quickly run from one relationship to another without understanding. You need time to mourn. You need time to figure out what went wrong. You can't. And meaning not what went wrong with that other person, but what went wrong with you. How did you let yourself get to that point where you're at when you had to leave that relationship? And that's that's where I feel. It's like, you know, I was never able to be me. I felt that way. I was always about the the team, about us, about we. It wasn't about me. It wasn't I wasn't trying to make it all about me, but I needed to be me from time to time. It comes back to that balance balance you need to have your moments of balance this is why i work better as a parent now because i'm guaranteed my days to myself 
There is no worrying about if I'm sitting here on the weekend and I don't want to do absolutely anything. If I don't want to clean up, if I don't want to do any chores, if I don't want to run around, I don't have to do it. And guess what? I don't have to be a dad. I don't have to worry about a person may possibly getting pissed off because I'm lazy around the house and I don't want to do anything. You understand? That freedom, that ability to just sit here and not do anything. If I want to podcast all day long, it's that creativity. I'm very creative, whether it's drawing, whether it's coming up with ideas, whether it's expressing myself, okay? But not everyone is the same. I get that. But I know that I have a need to be myself because I've built myself to desire and need some personal time to be an individual. And the reason I did that was because growing up, I saw my friends disappear one after another after another once they got in a relationship once they were with a girl count me out i'm out peace i'm not gonna see you i'm not gonna hang out and those people meant a lot to me so i said i don't want to be that way i don't want to be that guy that goes ahead and gets married and then leaves his friends behind leaves everything he knew behind but i ended up doing that i had to do it for the benefit of my marriage i had to do it I had to make it about we and about us, right? And give it and mold in, right? And it it, it was a great experience that I did it because I could look in the mirror and I know for myself, I I did the best that I could. I really did. I wasn't able to come up to the level that I was required for certain things, but I will say eight out of 10 things, I did excellent. Or nine out of 10 things. And... That's one of those self-assessments where you say, okay, and I, was in, I wasn't able to get to that higher level. And the whole body of work, I felt I gave a commitment. I, I gave myself to the point of self-detriment, of lack of self-happiness, and compromise my self-happiness, man. I did. So when I sit here and I talk to somebody else about this, man, and it was so depressing. It was so sad to just see this person crying because they understood they they were very empathetic they're like wow like that's where i need to be that's what i'm going through this guy is telling me exactly what's happening in my life right now and i'm wiping tears i'm like dude like relax you know it's all good like it's not but it was a very hard point to get across because many people including that girl and many people in life just don't get to the point where i'm at now They don't, meaning to get to the point of finding yourself back again. All those years that you were selfless, and I'm talking again to the people that make it all about we and us. And there's some people out there that love that, but I'm talking to the people that went ahead and submerged themselves, lost themselves in a relationship, and many years later, it didn't work out, and here they are at the other end of the spectrum, with forgetting who they were forgetting what they're all about forgetting what made them happy right and they don't know how to get there they don't know how to go back to that moment of being happy being them and i said it it took me a year a year or two it took me i honestly have to say that because and what i was telling this person was the path that i took because i didn't have a blueprint I didn't have nothing, no idea of how to get my happiness back. Like I knew I relieved myself of stress and of things that I wasn't happy with. But then, right, and I felt like this weight off my shoulders come off. Like, okay, (sighs) all right, Uh, okay, I, 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 I can move on. And it's, it's painful, but man, I just don't have to deal with the issues that we had on a day-to-day basis and letting that bog me down and i was saying to myself man how do i find myself again how do i find who i was in the first place it's a weird thing man i'm telling you it is one of the weirdest phases i was in and what i said to myself was okay you've been through this before man you've been through heartbreak you've been through disappointment this is the blueprint you're going to follow the way I have found myself, well, the way you find yourself is that you revert back to the times before marriage and you say, okay, what were the things that you did? 
in my case in point, it was playing basketball, being around people that play basketball and being involved back in those circles because basketball was a saving grace in my life. It really was. It, it taught me everything I know about becoming a person, a man, about my experiences, believe it or not, not just through the game, but through the people that were involved in the game. And we had that commonality of the sport. So I went back into it and I just started playing a lot more, a lot more and going because that was one of the things I stopped doing when I was married. I stopped playing basketball. I stopped playing in leagues. I stopped doing the very thing that I love to do. Right. And it was nothing to my partner, but it, it was more of me. Just that's I wasn't able to pursue it and do it as much as I wanted to because it caused a conflict a little bit. You know, when you're playing in leagues all the time and you're leaving to go play, um, you know, just something that my, my partner, you know, didn't understand sometimes. And I and I thought it's no no right or wrong, but I love playing. It was my outlet. And, it, and then later on it became the gym. But the reason I got away with the gym was because it was in the morning. It was very early in the morning. So I was able to get away with going to the gym because I did it. It was an hour, but then I came back. I could do it at home, so on and so forth. But that was the first step. I had to go back to the things that I loved doing before I got married. The second thing I did was I started reconnecting with everybody from my past. From those moments that I remember who Mena was before he got married, I touched base with those people. Again, just wanting to hang out with them, going to do things with them, getting on the phone, going through that contact, just talking to everyone and anyone, right, that would give me they didn't know this but they were giving me a window back into understanding who i was and it's and i was telling this person that i was talking to yesterday i said there are a couple occasions i'll talk to a person on a deep talk and i say you know what was it that you remember about me during that phase because i've forgotten who i am i've forgotten who the heck i was and they'll tell you some of them that you confide in, they'll tell you. Like one of them told me, man, you just you just went dark. After you got married, you just went dark. You disappeared. You didn't hang out. You weren't one of us. You, you just went ahead and, and you left us, man. You just didn't want to hang out anymore. And I get that. Another person told me, man, you just didn't give a fuck before. Meaning that I, I was a person that uh, I had an excitement and, and love for life and and when it came to just going out there and talking to girls and interacting, I just didn't, I, I was just, I didn't care. I was very gung-ho about having interactions with people, with women and things, where now I was more apprehensive. I became more hypersensitive after, after that whole thing. And that's what I was telling this person as well, that you create a hypersensitivity when you get to the level where that you're at. Through all those things that I did, through going through my hobbies and the things that I love doing and, and reconnecting with old people, I was able to find myself again. It took a while, but I was like, aha, I'm here. But obviously you're enlightened, right? You're enlightened and, and you're because you had the experience of the relationship and now you're saying to yourself, okay, whew, I found myself again. And, I, and, and this person, God bless her heart, man, she was just crying because... I was telling her the moment you find yourself again, the moment you feel like, okay, I'm minnow once again, whew, you never want to let that go. You never want to, where I'm at right now, it is very hard for me to let go, for me to give in, for me to compromise who I am now to make somebody else happy. I can't do it. I won't do it. Because you know how hard you've worked, meaning myself. How hard you've worked to get to this point of happiness. It wasn't an overnight thing. There were many dark days. There were very oh, there were various days, man, and moments where you're saying, Am I ever gonna get there? Am I ever gonna get to a place of happiness? Did I make the right choice? Man, you know, you're just doubting yourself because you don't have a path. No one knows this and no one can can help you understand this right because most of my friends all of them actually they're in relationships or with somebody and so that mindset is not there anymore right if they did have a breakup because they're it's kind of like trying to talk to people that have had kids a long time ago and they don't remember 
I feel that way with the friends and relationships. Like, nah, we're, we're in a whole different zone. You know, I'm in a different zone completely than they are. They're still going through that struggle. They're still going through that we and they're you know just there for the benefit of the kids. Most of the people I know are married just still because of the kids. They're not there because of the wife. They're just there because of the kids. And it's like, eh, it's convenient. You know, they still love that person. I said, I, my ex-wife, I still love her, man. She's a great person, great heart and all, but I, I don't want to be there anymore, you know? <laughs> and I, I don't mean it in a bad way, but you see but you see where I'm going with this is that when, and that's what happens when you come out of there and you're trying to find yourself again. And when you find yourself, you never want to let go. And this level of happiness and self-awareness that I exude is something people marvel at when they're at the bottom. And I was telling this person to wrap this up. You're a rock bottom right now. You, you're at a point where it's not going to get worse. It's not going to get worse. Everything that you love has been taken away from you. Everything that you, how you define yourself as a mother, as, as far as um, that being the euphoria, the utopia position in life. It's, you realize that it's not. And now you're having to build some self-reliance. Now you're having to... Um, go ahead and build a life with a new meaning, a new mindset. And it's scary because not many people can relate to that. Not many people have the strength or have the ability to know that they, there is a better way. And I'm hoping, I'm rooting for this person to get their act together, to, to do it. But I know that most people can't. People uh, get so discouraged and and i'm so thankful that i'm in a better place and it's not about trying to put anything down about my prior relationships it's more of i'm happy where i'm at now and when you understand the work that you put in to get to this point and when you see a new person in your life and yeah they're great yeah they're awesome yeah you, you could be but i have to compromise who i am for us, I can't do that anymore. We might work a year or two, but if you're going to make 37 years, 38 years, 52 years, eventually, I got to be me, okay? I got to be me. I got to be me. So you get this speech, it's not that I don't love you. Yeah. <laughs> that speech right there, we can always be free. But what that comes from is that I am exhausted from we and us and you would never let me be me.